Welcome to the shooting show. This week we have a Highlands special, starting with the ptarmigan on the high tops. Okay, we're in the Highlands in pursuit of ptarmigan. Uh, it's a specialist game bird for specialist people. It's not really uh, that much available to the sportsman, but uh, the difficulties in attaining ptarmigan shooting are part of the attraction. Uh, you only find them above the snow line, above two and a half thousand feet. The terrain's very, very difficult. Uh, Going to be shooting today is on the, the Highlander, and you start at sea level and uh, hike out to two and a half thousand feet. So it's a fair pull up there. You only find the birds among the scree. Uh, the camouflage is perfect. The only real predators they've got are the eagle and the peregrine falcon. Occasionally a fox may venture up there, but uh, it's mainly yeah, the birds of the prey. They freeze and you can't see them. You can actually walk past them. So walking on the scree is the, uh, the difficult part of it, but that's where you'll find the ptarmigan. Of course, you've got the weather. The highland weather, should we say, uh, is somewhat fickle. So that doesn't help. Uh, if you get caught up there in the fog, uh, it's very easy to step off the wrong ledge and, and take a flyer with disastrous results. But I've been hunting them uh, most of my sport in life and they're a very, very special game bird. Uh, indeed, they're my favourite game bird to pursue. Uh, today, uh, the shooting show's producer, Wesley Stanton and I uh, are going to go up on the same ridge. However, he's going to disappear with his cameraman and go from one side and uh, I'm going to go from the other side and hike up the long way around. We'll not see each other until the end of the day. Uh, so let's uh, see what we can do. was straight into a pair of ptarmigan, which flushed almost at my feet and offered a fairly straightforward left and a right. But unfortunately, I fluffed both shots. The day became overcast as I reached the ptarmigan plateau. Soon after, a mountain hare offered me an opportunity, and after missing behind with the first barrel, I pulled through and hit him hard at the front end, killing him instantly. Always think twice before shooting a hare on the high tops because they ain't light and it's a long way back with Hartley in the game bag. On this occasion I missed an easy opportunity at the snow grouse but I had secured a mountain hare which would be welcomed by the guests back at the lodge. 
However, my comrade in arms, Wesley Stanton, had fared, or dare I say it, performed better than I at this elusive quarry of the snow line. So we left the lodge about uh, just gone seven o'clock this morning. Uh, we climbed the steep side of uh, Ben Carrick in order to get to the top of Highlander as quickly as possible. Um, went along the top of Highlander and then we, we saw some time again, saw about uh, seven uh, after we'd been on the top about an hour, which uh, uh, broke us a covey. We didn't take any out of those. And then there were two on the ground, probably another 500 yards uh, further up. And as they flushed, went back along the mountain, I was fortunate enough to, uh, to shoot one of them. And uh, dropped down and managed to, managed to pick it uh, reasonably easily. I shot the second one. It was, for me, the shot of a lifetime. It was about 45 yards away and going like the clappers and it killed its stone dead. So I was, I couldn't be more delighted with that shot. A really, yeah, uh, really good day. Found it. Look at that. It's a pretty hard work time again shooting. Uh, you need to be pretty fit. When I first came here, I was carrying another four stone and I decided time again shooting was something quite light, so I'd like to have another go at it. Lost a bit of weight. Uh, so I've, I've got fit, but even so, it's, you know, miles and miles and miles of very tough ground. And at the day, if you get a brace, you've done well, and uh, I've got mine. Wesley there, beating me at the ptarmigan, but not at the hare. And now, the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News, brought to you by gunbid.co.uk. The badger cull has returned in Gloucestershire and Somerset in a bid to tackle bovine tuberculosis. In the second of a four-year government-backed pilot programme, marksmen started the process last Monday and there have already been encounters where culling has been interrupted by protesters. The pilot aims to cull 70% of the initial population of badgers to test how effective a full programme would be. After Clay Shooting Magazine announced a new venue for the British Schools and Young Shots Championships last month, the shooting show caught up with last year's winners as the youngsters returned to school and set their sights on the competition, taking place at West Midlands Shooting Ground on the 25th of April 2015. Yeah, yeah it was really, oh, really God. challenging course. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. The weather you... wasn't on our side either. Absolutely atrocious. We were well. bursting out with rain, the, the wind was pretty bad as well, the glaze were dipping here and there. And... It wasn't quite a school's course, but, but I, as a team we did like we advise each other if some people start doing going off course and say oh it's, it's a hard course just keep them going but it did challenge quite a lot of people especially us. Yeah, it was the first major competition I'd done and going into the first and um, pretty nervous and shot well on that one and um, came out with a bit more confidence and shot well through the day. So. We've got um, a games and activities program at the school and um, on a Monday afternoon, on a Wednesday afternoon for example, the pupils can choose all sorts of activities. And we had this group of lads who were keen on clay pigeon shooting. So um, we, what we did as a school was we, we got behind them, we supported the, in, in, the in initiative that came from them and their parents really as well. A couple of them um, had done quite a bit of shooting before they came to the school, but some of them it's something that they have d developed in the last couple of years. So we had a sports awards ceremony last year and uh, they got the team of the year um, uh, awards. It was great to see them up on the stage. And I think, I think they will all carry on in some way. Some will do it quite seriously and some more as a hobby. But yeah, there, there are only three of them left in the school now who, are, who were part of that team last year. But uh, I know they're going to try and get some other people to, to perhaps create a new team. At the kind sponsorship of William Perrell, we've got these nice gilets. Also, cartridge, cartridge bags. bags and, and some shooting glasses as well. Shooting glasses. Also, cartridges. Yeah, sponsored daily yearly cartridges and good as well. Yeah. Mm. See more in the next issue of Clay Shooting Magazine. The Oxford Gun Company has announced three pheasant shooting dates in two locations. Based in Buckinghamshire, the group will host a day of 150 birds on the 19th of November at Western Wood, the 10th of December at Kirklington, and another on the 14th of January when they return to Western Wood. These dates are sure to be snapped up quickly on a first-come, first-served basis, so contact Nicky at the Oxford Gun Company quickly to avoid disappointment. 
you can call 07917-727-232 or email nikki at oxfordguncompany.co.uk. And finally, Basque has mapped more than 1,000 areas of land used for shooting as part of the Green Shoots Mapping Programme, a secure online system that records species and habitats of national importance. Created in 2012, the programme asked Basque members to provide information about wildlife and habitats found on shooting land to help create a national picture of the environment. The areas cover 2,700 square kilometres and more than 600 members have contributed. Basque's Head of Biodiversity, Ian Danby, said reaching 1,000 shoots is a magnificent milestone and we expect many more members to sign up to Green Shoots Mapping. He hoped governments and conservation agencies can use the system to their advantage. That was the Shooting Show News. Last time we did some ballistic testing, I was looking at how the Gecko Plus coped with going through a bone simulant that I had placed in the ballistic gel that we were used for, using for testing. Today, I'm going to be testing all three bullets in 308, the Express, the Plus, and the Telemantle. And what I thought I would do is show you how these bullets cope under extreme stress. For that, I'm going to be using dry newspaper. Now, that may seem like a rather crude method, but in actual fact, it's a fairly good test medium. Dry newspaper is not a good reflection of uh, terminal performance inside an animal. However, what it does do is it really stresses the bullets to the absolute max. In fact, dry newspaper, to some extent, can be used to simulate uh, the effects that a, a bullet goes through when traveling through bone. So I've got a stack of um, newspapers and at the end I've actually got some glossy magazines which are even harder. So I'm going to fire all three of the 308 bullets side by side and then we can have a look to see how they've coped shooting through such a hard medium. And hopefully what that'll do is reflect the bullet construction in terms of what it's intended for. As we know from last time, the Gecko Plus is what Gecko push as their big game bullet. So I'm expecting with this test for it to perform the best and the Express, which is a much more explosive round, and it has its uses in slightly softer bodied game and uh, you, you end up with a very quick and explosive knockdown. I'm expecting that to perform the least well in this particular experiment. This experiment should favor um, really hard bullets that are designed for those tougher animals. So I'm going to get each of these down on um, a target, just make sure I know exactly where they're going. And I'm going to shoot them side by side in my box and then we'll, we'll rifle through the paper, have a look at um, the bullet, the, the end result, also have a look at the, the penetration and uh, then make some sort of evaluation and see if it is as I'm expecting to see. I have every confidence that it will be. pretty good. I tried to spread out the shots so that there wasn't anything overlapping. Now my first shot I actually made a bit of a mistake. I put the first express just a tad close to the edge which I actually went and recovered. This is it here. But I didn't feel like it had gone through 
um, an equally hard amount of the compact newspaper, so I decided to take that again just to make everything fair. So all that's left to do now is to dig in and dig out the bullets. All three penetrated there, you can see that. So they've all gone through fairly even amounts of compaction, so that's good. I'll just lay that there. Here's all three bullets here. If I turn this on the back, you can only see two. This one here is the first shot that I said that I retook. So inside here somewhere is the Gecko Express. So if I just turn this round the correct way, just like that, and I start digging backwards. Okay, yes. What do we have here? Okay, so just underneath this magazine here, I've got a few little fragments of um, fragments of the poly polymer tip and what feels like a bit of lead but mainly compacted paper. So if I just put that down on the ground. But I can see just in here, there you go. Look, there is the back of the bullet there. So that ties in exactly with what we thought. The Gecko Express would have the least penetration. It's the softest of the three bullets. It's got the most explosive expansion, which means it's gonna stop earlier than the rest. Now all that's left here is really just the jacket. There's no lead in here at all, which to be honest is hardly surprising shooting through something so hard. And those little bits of lead will be left behind in the paper and a little bit of the lead shot forward in front. So not a huge amount of weight retention there. I'll measure that when I get back. But you can see even the, uh, the bullet which didn't go through as much compact paper, which I fired before, very similar performance. It's lost most of its lead, it's not carrying much around the side. But, you know, it, it still would have done a job. Look how much paper it's gone through. That's still some fairly serious penetration, and uh, that would have caused a huge amount of damage on the way through. So that's the Express dealt with. So I will carry on going to see what's next. So of course, I'm expecting, oh, in actual fact, oh, that's just pure coincidence, that is, because I've just noticed here, the top of this magazine, there we are, look. That is the telemantle right there in the middle. No sign of the Gecko Plus, so that's exactly, exactly what I was expecting to see. So once again, if I just break off the bit of paper here, got similar performance. We've got a, what did we get? Probably an extra inch of penetration with the Gecko Telemantle. Very similar end results. We've just got the copper jacket here. All the lead has been uh, spilled through these papers and slowly come away as it's been penetrating deeper. This was the next one over. Now these are slightly more glossy magazines, so these are a bit harder, so they're going to stop the bullets a bit quicker. You can see that the Telemantle did break this magazine. In fact, there is, there is a bit of lead, actually, that's shot forward of the copper jacket. Oh, that's in a couple of pages there. Let's put that to one side. If we start to go through this, we can see that even on the next one, the Telemantle has cracked the magazine, but there's not actually any penetration. That's just a crack, and at the back end of it, there's nothing at all. However, the Gecko Plus, we're starting to see the odd little fragment of lead. It's still carrying on. It's gone through this one. It's gone through this paper just, and this is where it fell out. But what really is interesting is if we have a look at the state of the bullet, and this is the most telling story of all. This is the only one that actually has the lead in, uh, intact, and we can see that it's uh, maintained its bond to the copper jacket and the petals all the way around here, which is what is a, initiates the expansion, and there's still very good, very good weight in that bullet. The Gecko Plus really uh, is living up to what it's expected to do. So that's really um, quite heartening. It's always very pleasing when ex an experiment comes out 
the way that you're expecting it to. Uh, and what that tells me is that when I go to Africa next year, I think my choice of bullet is going to be Gecko Plus. Uh, next time we do some ballistic testing, we'll be having a look at how the bullets perform at extended ranges and what lowering the velocity means to bullet performance. Um, I'm probably going to be using newspaper again just for convenience and it also l still lets you see how the, the bullet can cope, um, especially under these more strenuous conditions and really taking the bullet to the limits of its capabilities. Until next time. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're a sportsman and not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, working for your sport and working for you.